The Adventures of Tom Sawyer by Mark Twain Long Man Simplified English Series Read by Pishichai Nopakao Chapter 6 In the Graveyard At half past nine that night, Tom and Sid were sent to bed as usual. They said their prayers and Sid was soon asleep. Tom lay awake and wet in restless, impatient. The clock struck eleven. Then there came Huck's signal. The meowing of a cat. A minute later, Tom was dressed and out of the window. He crept along the roof of the woodshed and then jumped to the ground. Huckleberry Huckleberry Finn was there with his dead cat. The boys moved off and disappeared in the darkness. Half an hour later, they were stepping through the tall glass of the graveyard. It was on a hill about a mile and a half from the village. A faint wind moaned through the trees, and Tom feared that it might be the spirits of the dead complaining about this disturbance of the rest. The boys talk in whispers of the time and the place. The solemnity and the silence had a depressing effect on them. They found the heap of newly dug earth which they were seeking and crept within the protection of three great trees that grew within a few feet of the grave. Then they waited in silence for what seemed a long time. The mournful cry of a distant burst was the only sound that troubled the dead stillness. Huck, do you believe the dead be Huck, do you believe the dead people like us to be here? said Tom in a whisper. I wish I knew whisper Huck. It's awfully solemn. Isn't it? It is. There was a long pause. There was a long pause. I say, Huck, do you think Horst Williams can hear us talking? Of course he can. At least his spirit can. Another long pause followed. I wish I'd say Mr. Williams breathed Tom, but I never meant any harm. Everybody calls him horse. You should be very careful how you talk about these dead people, Tom. This was discouraging and conversation dead again. Suddenly, Tom sees Huck's arms and exclaims, What is it, Tom? The two boys held on to each other, their hearts beating fast. There it is again. Didn't you hear it? Oh, Tom, they're coming. 
they are coming. What with you? I don't know. Do you think they'll see us? Oh, Tom, they can see in the dark just like cats. I wish I hadn't come. I wish I hadn't come. The boys bend their heads together and scarcely breathed. A dull sound of voices flood up from the far end of the graveyard. Look there, whispered Tom. What is it? It's devil fire. Oh, Tom, this is awful. S some way, figures approached through the gloom, swinging an old-fashioned lamp. It's the devils, I'm sure. Three of them. Tom will never get away alive. Can you pry? I'll try, but don't be afraid. They are not going to hurt us. Shh. What is this, Huck? They are human beings. One of them is. I'm certain. That's old Peter's voice. No, it isn't. Is it? I know it. Don't stir. I. He isn't sharp enough to notice us. Drunk as usual. I expect. All night I'll keep still. Here they come again. I say, Huck. I know another of them. It's Ray Skin Joe. That's so. That murdering half breed. I'd rather have devils. What do they want? The three men reached the grave and stood within a few feet of the boy's hiding place. Here is it, said the third voice, and the owner. And the owner of it held the lamp up and revealed the face of young Doctor Robinson, Peter, and Red Skinned Joe had a handcart hand cart from which they took from which. They took a blanket, a rope, and two plates. Then they began to open the grave. Hurry, man! Said the doctor in a low voice. They moon mean. The moon may come out at any moment. They made an indistinct reply and went on digging for some time. There was no noise but the sound of splitters moving in earth, moving the earth. Finally, a split struck the coffin, and within another minute or two, the men had lifted it out. They broke off the lid with their spreaders, got out the body, and dropped it roughly on the ground. The moon sailed out from behind the clouds and lit up the sharky face.
the hand cart was got ready and the body was placed on it covered with the blanket and bound in its place with the rope Peter took out a knife cut the end of the rope and then said now the costings ready sawbones and you'll head out another five dollars or here it stays that's the way to talk said Raskin Toe said Raskin Joe what does this mean? asked the doctor your demand you pay in at once and I pay you. Yes, and you don't more than that, said Redskin Joe. Approaching the doctor. Five years ago, you drove me away from your father's kitchen one night when I came to ask for a bit of bread, and you call me a Scoundrel, when I swore that I make you suffer for that, even if it took me a hundred years. Your father had me put in prison as a wicked born. Did you think that? I, with native blooded me, would forget such treatment. And now I've got you, and you must pay for it. He was threatening. The doctor with his fist in his face by this time. The doctor struck out suddenly and knocked the villain down. Potter dropped his knife and exclaimed, Here, don't strike my partner. The next moment, Pete the next moment, Potter and the doctor were fighting. Firstly, Reskin Joe sprang to his feet, his eyes gleaming with fury, snatched up Peter's knife, and when creeping cat like about the struggle, about the struggle. Playing men, seeking for an opportunity, suddenly the doctor tore himself free, seized the heavy headboard of William's grave and stunned Peter with it, and stunned Potter with it, and the same in sang. The half breed saw his turn and dropped the knife. At the same instant, the half breed saw his chance and drove the knife up to the handle in the young man's breast. He fractured and fell hardly upon Peter. He fractures and feed the he struggle and fell partly upon Porter, flooding him with his blood. At the same moment the clouds cover up the dre the dreadful spectacle and the two 
terrified boy sees this opportunity to creep away in the darkness. When the moon came out again, Reskin Joe was standing over the two men, regarding them thoughtfully. The doctor murmured something, gave a long breath or two, and was still. The half-breed muttered, "That account is it settled." That account is settled, cause you. Then, he rubbed the body. After doing so, he put the photo knife in Potter's right hand and sat down on the broken coffin. Three, four, five minutes passed, and then Potter began to stir and moan. His hand closed upon the knife. He raised it, glanced at it, and let it fall with a shiver. Then he sat up, pushing the body from him, and gathered, gathered it, and around him, confusedly, his eyes met Redskin Joe's. His eyes meet Reskin Joe's. Good heavens! What's this, Joe? He said. It's a nasty business," replied Redskin Joe. Without moving. What do you do it for? What did you do it for? I, I didn't do it. Potter, triple and went white. I thought I wasn't drunk. I shouldn't have touched any drink tonight, but it's in my head yet. I can't remember anything about this. Tell me, Joe. Truthfully, now, O oh, Philo, did I do it, Joe? Upon my soul and honor, I swear, I. I swear that I never meant to, Joe. Tell me how it happened, Joe. Oh, it's awful, and he was such a fine young doctor. Why, you two were struggling. And he hit you with the headboard and knocked you down. Then you got up, snatched the knife, and stuck it into him, just as, just as he hit you again. And you've been lying here, and you've been lying here till now. Oh, I didn't know what I was doing. It was all on account of the drink and excitement. I'm sure, I never used a weapon in my life before, Joe. The poor creature dropped on his knees and held out his arms before the murderer. Joe, don't tell. Say that you won't tell, Joe. That's a good fellow. I've always liked you, Joe, and defended you too. You want to? You want to tell, will you, Joe? No, you've always been good to me, Potter, and I keep you mouth shut. Oh, Joe. You are an angel. I'll bless you for this till my dying day. He began to cry. Come now. That's enough of that," said Reskin Joe. "You go that way, and I'll go this. Move, 
now, and don't leave any tricks behind you. Potter hurried away, and the half-breed stood looking after him. If he's as much stunned with the blow, and as stupid with the drink as he seemed to be, Redskin Joe mutters. He won't think of the knife till he's gone so far that he be afraid to come back for it. The cover.